Galatians chapter number 5 is 22 and 23 are some verses I've challenged our teenagers to memorize. I said uh, we should all try to have some scripture just embedded on the walls of our heart that we can quote at any time. All right. Why is that? Because the devil's going to tempt. And uh, yes, the ultimate victory over Satan is Jesus Christ and the death, burial, resurrection and, and, and all that. But he did respond to Satan with, it is written. And if it's better to say it is written and quote it, uh, trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lead not into thine own understanding. Um, I think the verse says, I, I'm pretty sure, but get it down. And, uh, and this is one of those verses, I hope you can do it. Read along with me. It's, the Bible says, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace. Next three words, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness. Next three words, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. Now what that basically means, that last part is, against such there is no law. There is no, you must do this to do that. There is no law that thou shalt produce. It, it's no law against this. It's just given that those who are Christ, those who have the Holy Spirit within them, should have an outflowing of this Holy Spirit through love, joy, Amen. peace. Long, there's no law. There's no rule that says, Jeff, the rule is your grass grows in the spring and summer. You've got to mow it or you're going to have a mess out there, right? We could say that it's an inside of our mind law that this should take place. So we got to make sure we take care of it. And if I'm going to mow the grass, there's a law. I got to have gasoline in the lawnmower. And there's a law. I got to check the oil and make sure there are certain things that must come in place. But God didn't make a law for the fruit of the spirit to grow out of us, it is given that it should come out of the life of a Christian. And so as we're teaching through these, I try to give our teenagers, and I'm going to give to you, some things that can be a reminder, okay, that we should have the fruit of the Spirit coming out of us. And we started two weeks ago, we started, and, and I taught on this and gave it to our teenagers. Let's see, teenagers, the fruit of the Spirit is love. And so since we're speaking about fruit, what fruit did I equate love to? Teenagers, who wants to raise their hand? Oh, um, I saw Nathan's hand up first again. Sorry, girls. Nathan, what fruit did we use for the word love? An apple. So yes, yeah, so hopefully, why did you choose an apple, Brother Clint? Well, I chose an apple, and uh, I researched this, right? Thank God for the internet. Apples are good for all seasons. They're used in many recipes. Americans eat more apples per capita than any other fruit. Apples are a member of the rose family. And why do we give roses at Valentine's? To tell our sweetheart that we love them. And so all of those things put together, I said, hey, kids, when you see an apple, I want you to ask yourself, is the love of God being produced in my life? When you eat apple pie, I hope the Holy Spirit says, is the love of God being produced in your life? I pray when you eat apple fritters or apple jacks or whatever apple combination you want to put together, I hope it just starts to trigger a memory to say, hey, the love of God, the love of God, the love of God, not, oh yeah, Adam and Eve. Isn't that what we normally associate with an apple? Though the scripture never says it. We just assume, oh, it was some fruit. It was probably an apple. It was probably a tomato, okay? And uh, amen, Brother Jeremy. Uh, Brother Jeremy. Brother Jerry, that's your name. And, uh, and so an apple, the apple of love. And then, and then a few, uh, two weeks ago, I said the word joy. Does any teenager remember what? Uh, I didn't ask yet completely, Ashlyn. You went a little bit early. I may have to penalize the girls on that one. Uh, Jonte, I saw your hand go up. What you got? What, 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 what fruit did we associate the word joy with? A banana. A banana. You're probably wondering why a banana. Well, just look at it. If you hold it this way, what letter does that look like? A J. A J for joy. Hey, if you hold a banana under your nose, you know what it looks like? It looks like a smile, doesn't it? It looks like someone who has joy. There's another reason. A few years ago, the internet was blowing up with a video. This father in England 
The day before Christmas, he said, kids, I'm going to let you open a present the day before Christmas. They were so elated and excited. And as they opened up their gifts, I want you to see this. Eddie has his video. It's not the best quality. It's not, I understand. But just, I want you to listen to the excitement that these kids had. They're not Americans. They're not, but just watch their excitement as they open their Christmas gifts a day early. They each get to open one of these. Watch this. Brother Eddie's got it. A banana. A banana. A pumpkin. It's not a pumpkin. No, it's an onion. Not a pumpkin. 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 Not a Okay, now, now how can you not watch that and just not chuckle? And then, and then again, he did what I did. Hey, the banana of joy. In addition to that, I saw this too. Listen, bananas are the only fruit that contain the amino acid tryptophan plus vitamin B6. They help your body produce serotonin, a natural substance that alleviates depression. Now y'all be like, man, I need to eat more bananas. <laughs> the banana. Last week we taught on this. Where's is Megan in here? Megan had some wisdom teeth pulled. I gave another stat in there because it was just us teenagers. But you know in the 60s, they tried rolling the banana peels and smoking them to produce happiness. Now, I told our teenagers, that doesn't mean I'm giving you a license to go home and smoke banana peels, but I'm telling you that even the hippies were trying to find joy in the banana. And so Megan had her wisdom teeth pulled. I'm not going to play that video, sister. But uh, as she was recovering from the anesthesia or the gas they had, and I think her mom asked her something and said, do you need something? And she was like, huh, a banana. I need a banana. And uh, really, why do you need Brother Clint talked about smoking bananas. I was like, <laughs> oh, man. So when Miss Tanya sent us that video, I said, there's a message to go with the smoking bananas. But <clears throat> so the, 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 jo the banana of joy. And we gave him that acrostic, J-O-Y, Jesus, others, you. But how do you live that life of Jesus, others, you? By abiding in Christ. You abide in Christ, and that's the Jesus. And then, of course, to live for others, and uh, when you abide in Christ, you get the favor of God on your life. When you have answered prayers, that's a joy. So we've gone through the apple of love, the banana of joy. And now this week, da -da 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 drum roll, here we go. Well, the word is peace. So what fruit in your mind are you thinking of when we say peace? Well, looking at this bag, we're ruling out watermelon, right? Or are we? Do you know how small... I'm just kidding. I don't have one in here. How many of you were thinking orange? Why an orange? It's because it was on sale at the supermarket. That's why. <laughs> The orange of peace. We're going to talk about this in scripture, don't worry. It's loaded with vitamin C. We know that. It also contains vitamin B. It also contains carotene, potassium, and folic acid to help boost your immune system and lower your cholesterol. The orange peel. There's a ton of things you can do with those orange peels. Any gardeners in here? They say, now I wouldn't know this, right? Because it's not me. Brother Lester, they say if you put orange peels sprinkled over your vegetables, it'll help keep slugs away. I wouldn't know. I know there's a ton of things you can do with orange peels. You can put them in dirty shoes in the closet. When you take them off, put some orange peels in there to help reduce the odor. Oranges are typically in 10 segments inside the orange. When you peel it, you normally get 10. Sometimes it's nine or eight, but you normally get 10 segments. And the reason I chose the orange is this, is as I pull this out and make a mess of our pulpit, the one thing you do about an orange 
is you eat it in pieces. That's why I chose the orange of peace. <laughs> because sometimes I eat a piece of orange. You don't eat an apple in pieces, per se. I know, you may get that thing where you slice them and get wedges and go, I understand that. But we're going to talk about the... I got that piece stuck in my tooth yet. One second. (laughs) But the orange of peace. Father in heaven, tonight, I pray in these next few moments that we'll see the scripture plainly to ask ourselves, are we producing these fruits... Let me back up, God. We don't produce these fruits. We allow these fruits to be produced from the Holy Spirit within us because we cannot muster these up ourselves. We cannot stir ourselves enough to produce these. To be genuine fruit, there'll be overflow from the Holy Spirit. And if we can move our flesh and allow these to grow and to be produced, we can be the Christian you want us to be. I ask these things in the strong name of Jesus. Amen. John 15, 8 says, Herein is my Father glorified that ye bear much fruit. So not only should we be producing the fruit of the Spirit, God has taught us that he wants us to produce much fruit of the Spirit. And not just, well, I'm more of a love person, and I'm more of a joy person, and I'm more of a, uh, of a peace person, and I'm not real confrontational. No, no, no. You don't pick and choose it. You just allow the Holy Spirit to produce these inside of you. You don't produce these. You allow them to flow through you. So what is peace? Most people would say that peace is this. The absence of strife. You served in our military? Yeah. Did you serve in a war or did you serve in peacetime? We kind of diminish their service a little bit because they didn't go to Vietnam or they didn't serve in Korea or they weren't in Operation Desert Storm or they weren't in World War II and they didn't go to face Normandy and, oh, oh, you just, you pushed a pencil. Oh, you did it. It's awful. Peace is not the absence of strife. Let's look to the Bible real quickly. The Old Testament word is shalom, right? That's how Jews greet each other. Shalom, peace unto you. The New Testament word is yirin. And this means this, it's inner well-being, the tranquility of order. So we're putting a definition here. Peace can can be defined as this, inner calm, even in the midst of outward turmoil. Inner calm, even in the midst of outward turmoil. Sometimes he calms the storm. Sometimes he calms us in the storm. I don't want to pray the storm to be gone. I want to pray for you to have strong shoulders to get through the storm. I want to pray for you to have strong shoulders that you can bear the yoke with Christ and get through it. And as a result, you bear fruit. So what is peace? Peace is calm even in the midst of outward turmoil and calamity. Because can I tell you what's not going to end is turmoil and calamity. Man's days are full of trouble. His sparks fly upward. You're going to have them. When will we finally get past this difficult time? Um, When I'm laying in a casket right there. And you have my service is when I'll be done with them. And same with you. They're always going to be there. Well, that's not real encouraging. What are you talking about? The encouraging part is you can go through them with Christ. You don't have to go through them alone. Well, you know, only my family truly understands this. No, can, can I just remind all of you? Your preacher and your preacher's wife, they go through junk too. They just don't call you and tell you about it like you call them to get a 30-minute counseling. And that's what we're here for. But you're not alone. Not only does Christ want to help you carry it, your brothers and sisters in Christ want to help you carry it as well. So that is what peace is. How is peace expressed? It's expressed four ways. And I'm going to be quick on this. Romans 5, 1, therefore being justified by faith, we have peace with God. 
That's where peace starts. Number one, the fourfold way is peace with God. Peace with God, therefore, can be maintained by not allowing sin to come between us and Him. The ultimate way to have peace with God is to trust Him as your personal Savior and become a Christian. And I know many of us in this room are there. But then there's some folks who don't have peace with God because there's something between your soul and the Savior. There's something kind of just, you feel like your prayers bounce off the ceiling. It's called S-I-N. If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. And if I have sin in between me and the Savior, there's just something that you, you, you always say, I can't really put my finger on it. No, you can. You just don't want to name it. You just don't want to talk about it. You want to try to cover it. You want to try to hide it. But he that covereth his sin shall not prosper. But whoso confesseth and forsaketh shall be blessed. What's that blessing? It's the peace. It's peace. Obedience is one way to maintain peace with God. The other is confession. We should obey the, 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 the commandments and uh, statutes from the word of God that we know. And then every now and then when we break them, just get it right and confess it. Confess it. But if we walk in the light, 1 John 1, as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sins. If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Any parent knows this, that when you just sense uh, something's a little out of whack with the relationship with your child, the first thing in your mind is going, I wonder what they need to tell me. The kids are all playing outside, having a good time. Man, this has been awesome. All of a sudden they come in real quiet. I'm, I'm going to go in my room, uh, Mom. I'm gonna, uh, you know, it's been a while since I cleaned it, so I'll just be in there. I'm going to go clean my room. Boy, that radar's going off. What's wrong? They don't want to, hey, come here. Sit. No, no, Mom, I'm a little busy. I don't want to come out there, Dad. Dad, it's, uh, I'm okay. You don't need to take me to the store with you. I, I'm good, man. Right, hey. Too many of us live like that as Christians. You know what that is? That is not peace with God. That is, I wonder if he found out. The eyes of the Lord are in every place, beholding the evil and the good. And you're asking, I wonder if he found out. It tells you how paranoid we become when we have sin in our lives. Peace with God. We need to keep short accounts. Secondly, when you have peace with God, then you can have peace with one another. Peace with one another. That's the second fold way to have peace. But again, ultimately, the to where many of us are, it's peace with God, peace with God, peace with God, peace with God. And then when you take care of that, now we can have peace with one another. Colossians 2.14, For he is our peace, who hath made both one, and hath broken down the middle wall of partition between us. You listen to me, when we become Christians, it should be very clear. clear that what he was saying here is there's no longer Jew and Gentile. And for us, when we become brothers and sisters in Christ, can I tell you, there should be a commonality of the fact that we're brothers and sisters in Christ. There is no more rich and poor and country and city and educated and uneducated. We're all united and part of one family of God, or so we should be, because in God's eyes, that's how he sees us. He doesn't see Jeff as the bus director who grew up in the country and Clint the city slicker who works with teenagers. He sees me as a child of God. He sees him as a child of God. And if God sees us that way, we should see each other that way. Yeah, well, look at the kind of clothes they wear. Shame on you. Well, look at the type of vehicle they drive. Shame on you. That ain't biblical Christianity. That's the flesh coming out, not the fruit of the Spirit. Ephesians 4, 3, we should endeavor to, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in bonds of peace. We keep the peace by asking for and granting forgiveness whenever needed. We keep the peace by asking for and granting forgiveness whenever needed. I find it unbelievable how much 
and I'm glad he's not in here, how much your pastor always wants to make sure everything is right between you and he. he we, Brother Tucker, we were just talking about something flippantly, not, 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 not crass, not dirty, no, nothing like that. It wasn't even church. We were just talking about something. And then about 20 minutes later, Brother Ryan, he calls me back and said, Brother Clint, in that conversation I had with you, I want you to make sure, I want you to make sure you understand that I wasn't being negative when I told you this, this, and this. I was, I was just explaining, quoting that one thing. So, so please don't take that the wrong way. I said, preacher, it's fine. I didn't even take it that way. He says, well, I thought it could have been taken that way, and I just wanted to make sure you knew. It wasn't a joke. It wasn't crap. It wasn't, not, it wasn't any. If I told it to you, you'd be scratching your head like I do. This afternoon, he stopped me in the hallway just to make sure. Were we clear? Was I clear on the phone, Brother Clint? Because sometimes I know in text messages that it doesn't get across clearly all the way. And I told, I told you on the phone, but I want you to see me face to face. Do, do, do you have any questions about yesterday? You know what that is? That is someone who wants to maintain peace. Peace with God. Peace with one another. The third one we see peace is peace with God. The world. What? I didn't say friends with the world. I said peace with the world. We shouldn't be surprised when worldly, unsaved people act the way they do. And so when that happens, remember, it takes two people to argue. Now, I'm not talking about when your life's in danger, you know, if some guy broke in your house. I'm not saying, oh, hello, brother, right? Uh, what can I, hey, oh, you're not, you, can I give you an invitation to our church before you take all of our things and harm my family and I? I'm not saying be silly like that. I'm saying you exercise the amendments that our Constitution gives us and the Bible gives us, right? You'd be like that old Puritan, they said. That Puritan was standing there with his old muzzle uh, rifle. He says, sir, I would do thee no harm, and I would wish thee no evil. However, thou art standing about in the place where I'm about to shoot. And uh, so, so you can handle it that way. But peace with the world. Why should we do that? Because God told us to. Hebrews 12, 14, follow peace with all men. Romans 12, 17, 18, recompense to no man evil for evil. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. If it be possible, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. Matthew 5, 9, blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Yeah, but man, it just fires me up when I see that news station talk about that. Watch this. Click. Your blood pressure just went down. Don't watch it. Man, every time I hear that one person talk at work, well, if one person is there, then go over here. You don't have to listen to all that garbage. You don't have to be around all that garbage. Oh, uh, uh, uh. yeah, but Brother Clint, what if, I, uh, what if we work right next to each other? Okay, well, then we'll find a way to live peaceably with all men. If he starts to play his music loud, you buy a teen choir CD, and you put it in your thing, and you turn that thing up. When he starts bringing magazines to read, you start bringing Bibles and other books to read. When he starts putting pictures up of whatever, you start putting verses up about whatever. And you just quote them and start reading them. And when he complains to his boss, then you can say, well, I'm just doing what he's doing. And your boss will probably do something that mine did. Well, fine, since you guys can't do it, nobody gets any stuff now. <laughs> Live peaceably with all men. How do we live at peace with it? By being the Christian God wants us to be, not just by winning an argument. You do realize some of those unsafe folks just want to put a burr under your saddle and just see you get going. I'm not going to give them that joy. Oh, did you see the president and what they're talking about him on this? Yeah. I, sometimes I just agree with them to where they don't have... How about that one story about the, yeah, I know. I don't, I'm not for that either. You're like, oh. Yeah, but, but I thought you, yeah, I voted for him, but I don't like all that garbage he does. 
Ugh. Then he'll find something else. Oh, I bet you went to church on Easter, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, I did. Yeah. You're probably going to try to get me to go too. You want to go? So stop talking to me about church. I'm not talking to you. You just started this conversation. Oh, I don't want to talk to you. Diffuse it, diffuse it, diffuse it. Throw it back in there. You know, if you study the life of Christ, one of the best things he did to refute those people, you know how you get them when they ask you a weird question? Ask them a question back. He, they'd ask him, he'd turn it right back on. Well, what do you think? Oh, you believe it? Yeah, yeah. Well, what do you think? Oh, it doesn't matter what I think. Well, why are you asking me what I think then? Peace with God. Peace with one another. Peace with the world. And then lastly, you know what this gives you? Peace within. It gives you peace within. And the peace of God which passeth all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Jesus Christ. You know, there's a shield that we're not using called the Holy Spirit. And when we have peace within, we allow the Holy Spirit to keep the junk out. Amen. Jesus promised us this same peace in John 14, 27, when he said, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither lest it, uh, let it be afraid. So how is this peace developed? Let's finish up. Let's turn to Philippians chapter 4 and we'll be done. This is our concluding thing to see here. We talked about what is peace and, and how is peace expressed, but now we're going to see it develop. Philippians chapter number 4. Now we did use this as joy, but I find it great that all these words interlink. Love, joy, and peace. But we'll just look at a few verses and see P-E-A-C-E. -E. Verse number 4 of Philippians 4 says, Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. How do we have peace? We P, praise always. Praise always. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. I mean, in case you forgot when I said you should rejoice in the Lord always, let me say it one more time. Again, I say rejoice. Verse number six, be careful for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto men. The letter E in this word peace is everything by prayer. Talking about P E A C E. Praise always, everything in prayer, by prayer. Verse eight, finally, brethren. Whatsoever things are, what's it say there, class? True. Whatsoever things are? Honest. Whatsoever things are? Just. Whatsoever things are? Pure. Whatsoever things are? Lovely. Whatsoever things are? Of good report. If there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. Always think positively. I don't see one negative word God tells us to think on right there. He says think on things that are true, honest, just, pure, lovely, good reports. Those bad reports, don't think on them. You can read them and be educated on it so you know what's going on. Man, they're doing uh, uh, traffic work on I-40 again. Good. No, okay, be educated about it, but don't dwell on it. Oh, how am I going to go? Do I got to take Stevens Creek, Silas Creek? Am I going to go Business 40, uh, 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 Main 40? Oh, it just stress you out. You know what? Okay, it's closed. I'll find another way to get there, just like the other 300,000 people that live in Winston-Salem have to drive through that area. Don't let it eat at you. P-E-A-C, verse 11. Not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am therewith to be content. Content in all situations. So we're seeing where peace is in chapter 4. Uh, praise always, everything by prayer. Always think positively. Contentment in verse 11. And then in verse 13, we see the last E. I can do all things through, through Christ, which strengtheneth me. Expectations of strength. <laughs> you can expect it this way. If I go through Christ, I'm going to have strength. Right? Isn't that what they tell you? If you join our gym, you'll have these results. 
Well, let me refrain it. You can join the gym, but then you got to show up after you pay for that membership, right? But God's more of a guarantee. If you go through Christ, he says, I'll strengthen you. If you go through your flesh, you're going to be depressed. If you go through what you want to plan out and what you want to do, it's going to be very difficult. And you're going to be so weak and frail and just say, I, I just don't even know if I can go to church today. I'm in such a mess. And God says, well, go through Christ. I'll strengthen you. P-E-A-C-E. So the better we get to know the God of peace, the more the peace of his presence will come through our lives. Peace with him, peace with one another, peace with the world, and peace within. Let's allow his love, joy, and peace to, follow through, uh, to flow through us, which will then flow out of us to be a help and blessing to others. The apple of love. The banana of the orange of Allow the Holy Spirit to grow these fruits through you.